Ladies and gentlemen, I now call to order our July council meeting, and I recognize Councilman Eric Nash for the invocation. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for letting us all gather here this evening. Thank you for the heat, even though it stresses us, and but Lord, we know it's the seasons of our state of Virginia. Lord, bless the decisions that we make here tonight, and let them be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 We now invite you to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to thank everybody for coming out in a, what's normally a vacation month. We have uh, no scheduled visitors, but I do want to recognize we have an issue on the agenda, and I see Ms. Wilma Rutledge Townsend here, and I'd be willing to recognize you first if you'd like to take your topic um, to, you came I, You came here from, was it King, King William or Prince of William County? King William. King William. King William. Not the prince, but the king. All right. That's right. <laughs> and your husband is here. What is, what yes, is Howard, Howard. Howard. Tells. Nice to see you, sir. Um, I was here a month ago, and the agreement was is that the fence was going to go up. Everybody was in agreement. D and Ken, they were sitting here and they agreed. Uh, Philip and I, we had words. Everybody, oh, well, you can look on this again if you really want to watch. I mean, talking about oh. you and I, <laughs> the back and forth between he and I. When I left, when Howard and I left that night, everything was agreed. They were going to put the fence up, and that was it. The town was going to do the installation, and D was going to uh, pay for the uh, materials. The, yes. And so I called Jennifer. I don't know if I called Jennifer or Tessie. I called somebody, and they said, oh, no, 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 no. He backed out of that. We're not putting up a fence. Dee's changed his mind. He ain't going to do that. I said, well, that's kind of stupid. He's paying uh, Ken Walden more than what he'd put the fence up. It doesn't make any sense to me. Now, the point with me is this has been going on since October the 6th of last year when the town cut down the sight and sound barrier. I notified the town immediately upon my finding out about it. So here we are all these months later, kicking our feet, thumbing our nose, picking our nose, doing whatever you want to do, July the 17th, and nothing's been done. Nobody has fined him for uh, going against the ordinance, there's no, nobody smacked his hand. Nobody said, "No, no, no, D, D, uh, D you can't do that. You got to put that sight and sound barrier back up," right. as per the town ordinance of July 2003. Let now, me let me ask just okay just to rehash, not to interrupt the speaker. You, she's referring to the board of zone appeals meeting. Where, was any was any vote taken at the recent board of zone appeals meeting? Uh, speaks to everybody. Yeah, yes. Yeah. In 2003, there was a variance grant. It wasn't an ordinance. Right. It was to, the to, the, to the satisfaction of Mr. and Mrs. John Roach. Correct. But at the recent BZA meeting. No okay. Because I thought, as she thought, we thought that it was kind of a gentleman's thing. We're going to get this done. They were agreeable to pay for the materials. We were agreeable at town labor to install the fence. And I thought that was the case. What has happened, and Tessie's here to present, <clears throat> is I think we've got a chicken or the egg situation. <clears throat> They decided they didn't want to do that unless we could virtually guarantee that the BZA would modify the variance to take Ms. Rutledge off as a satisfied adjoining property owner. To take the names out of it and make it, make it a, like a certain Eight footage. Foot fence and all that gotcha. sort of thing. So we drew up an agreement. And Tessie's much that makes better. sense. I mean, I will say, now I have to ask this question. I'm not trying to impugn anybody on this <coughs> question. Mm -hmm. You were not the manager in 03. I was not the mayor in 03. Mm -hmm. But in 03, I would imagine the board, board of Zoning Appeals decisions were signed off by the town's legal counsel at that time. That wording's being criticized all of a sudden, mm -hmm. but I'm curious, the Board of Zoning Appeals didn't just get to be free agents and go out there and make up stuff, did they? We've been in Blackstone, as everybody knows. We don't meet very often BZA. Right. And I don't remember Tessie ever coming to a BZA meeting. So I wouldn't have full confidence that Ken was standing there dictating the terms and conditions of the variance. Right. Um, just Our attorney's here because it's a hot topic. Sure, sure. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't. It wouldn't have Tessie here. If everything was agreeable and we're moving on, probably wouldn't have a legal. Now, Ken's 
Ken would like the terminology and the variance to modify, and that's why we originally went. I don't think Wynn was crazy about it, but I think as a representative of Mr. Duncanson, what he's trying to do is have a dictated height and vinyl and all that kind of thing and agree on the style, but he wants to take Ms. Wilma or the Rutledge's name out of the barrier. Correct. I understand that, but again, but again, that's a, that's a request and a preference, but that's not. We can't guarantee what the BZA is going to do. Right. We They're independent of the town council. They are independent. They're independent, and we can't say the BZA will do this if you do that. I asked Ken if he would put up the fence and get it done. We pay or they pay, and we put it up, and then we can go to BZA with good, clean conscience that there's been a. a, a a good effort to, to show good faith, and I think they don't want to spend the money until the BZA or they've got the response they want from the BZA. But at the end result is we've tried. A dozen but who's groups. to say that they're going to get the answer they want? Because I'm going to fight them. I understand. I'm going to. Right. What's, what's that, Lloyd uh, Hundley? Oh, Hundley Williams. Hundley Williams. I think if they don't, I'm done. Hundley Williams. I'll give y'all 30 damn days to have the thing put Let's up. Let's watch your lives. Well, I, 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 this has gotten old. I got 90 miles coming down here, and you know, I just, agree. Fine. Thirty. It was, it was set aside last meeting to June first. Thirty days. If they have things up, or I'm taking y'all to court, all of y'all hard, because Hunter Williams gonna play ball. And once I turn the dogs loose on it, I ain't pulling back in as soon as I let that open the table. I understand. I understand. I'm playing this bullshit. Uh, this is no, wrong. sir, sir, sir. You're out of sir, you're out of order. Watch I'm your language, sorry. please, sir. I'm sorry, but the whole place. I understand the passion. Let's choose the words carefully. I understand. Said you were doing. I go to church all the time. Okay, so, right, sir, the floor, Mrs. 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 Townsend has the floor. Right. Mrs. Townsend has the floor. I agree with Howard. We have played this ball game. We have been down here. I've been to four meetings. I drove four meetings. I've seen D. Duncanson in this building one time. And all the times I've come down here, I have talked to Philip. I've talked to Tessie, Jennifer. I talked to you. you and you know what I got? Nothing. You got words. Let me tell you two things from behalf of this council. First of all, and I'm, I'm not happy. I understand the passion. I, let's watch your language. You deserve an A for patience. You have, it has been nine months, so I want to commend you on that and thank, thank you. you for that. I also want to give you some good news. I did read my packet, and I believe in the packet is a recommendation for the town to, as the town manager said, the packet, sadly, but necessarily, proceed with legal action. I agree with that 100%. The thing is, is that this is what D wants. D wants to get the word in the way he wants it. And then maybe he'll do something else because we already know he's a liar. Well, no, no, let's, 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 we're, we're impugning. We're, we're now committing. Let's, uh, no, I'm, that's the truth. But no, let's we don't. call up. Spade please, a spade. Please, please, please. Mr. Norback, can you resolve this so we can move on? Yep. We do. We, this council, I would ask council right now to refer to your packet. There is a recommendation from the staff in your packet to you either can vote on the recommendation or pass it. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to stick to business and, and keep the passion on the side. Yes, I, I, Tessie have something to add. Before. Yes, and of course yes. our legal counsel. I'm sorry, Tessie. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. You. Yes. Um, and, yes. And I'm not trying to brush this aside. I want to assure you. I just passions are running hot right now. I want to make sure we choose the, the elected officials, especially myself included, choose our words carefully. Yes. Yes. And what everyone has said is, you know, right regarding the facts we have been around and around about it and it is a chicken and the egg problem the bga did not act at the last meeting initially what we were hoping is to and what mr walton as mr duncanson's issue is you know about putting the fence up without getting the bga's approval and so that's what it comes down to at this point our recommendation given what all we've been through at this point and what my recommendation is and we have discussed this with mr duncanson's notebook too is to request to proceed with legal action if the bza does not do what is satisfactory to everyone involved right what the agreement said which has not been signed in my understanding is i would sign it signed. It, I, it was yeah. until this happened mm -hmm. And that says what motion we anticipate Mr. Duncanson or Mr. Walden making would be um, on motion made by board member blank, seconded by board member blank. It was resolved that the request to modify the variance granted for the property designated as TAPS map parcel number 50A 
dash 28 dash 1 dash 8 asterisk is located on Main Street. Adjacent to the property owner by Wilma Rutledge Townsend is hereby granted upon the following terms. And then the terms are the 20 foot setback on the rear property line is granted, provided that the applicant erect and maintain a barrier on applicant's property along the property line of Wilma Rutledge Townsend. The barrier shall be made of white vinyl fencing and shall be uniformly eight feet in height. It shall be located by the town of Blackstone personnel on or near the top of the slope so as to avoid interfering with underground utilities. Town personnel shall install the barrier at no cost to the applicant. Applicants shall pay for the materials and supplies needed for installation per the estimate provided by the team. Okay. And that I was ready to sign the paper and say, Pardon it's me. a day. Right. But when I called, they said, oh, nope, nope, nope. He done backed up again. Right. Now, let me t explain something to everybody. When D. Duncanson was building these apartments in 2003, my husband had just had quadruple bypass surgery. July the 3rd. We came down here to this building and we had this zone in area. He wanted to put his commercial property next to my residential property. And he could as long as he maintained a sight and sound barrier. Right. No problem. You put Now we didn't want the trees. We explicitly told everybody down here, no trees, we want a fence. When did you say, 2003? 2003. Right, okay. But John had just had quadruple bypass surgery. He went and planted the trees. Okay. okay we can't, got we can't go back. We can't go back no, to No, no, we can't but do but I'm just saying. Sure. He put the trees up. All right. You know how sick John was. Everybody yeah. knew how sick yeah. John was. Yeah. So John was sick, and so the trees, I watched them grow. I watched them grow up to 20 feet, 25 feet. <laughs> I was happy. We maintained them. He never put cut a piece of grass around them or nothing. We maintained them. And then in October of last year, he had them cut down, chopped them down for no reason. Oh, he said he wasn't getting enough light back there. Well, let me tell you something. My property's next door. I wasn't getting enough light on the side of my house. So Ray, my son, put a light on the east side and put a light on the west side. The west side is on his side. Right. So, now he just wants to back up. He wants to stop in the middle of this ball game and change all the rules. Now, the rules were set forth in July of 03. You want to put your commercial par uh, apartment complex here? Right. Next to this residential? These are the stipulations. This is what you have to do. Okay. Now, he don't want to do that anymore. I know this has been a difficult time for both of you. Would, you, would What you heard tonight from the town attorney about proceeding with legal action to, for, to enforce compliance, would that satisfy you tonight? As long as the compliance is, the site and sound barrier is put up there and maintained and left there. Right. As long as I have breath in my body and my name is on that piece of property, I fully expect the town to make him meet those goals. That is a, a commercial property. And, you know, he says, oh, y'all don't never have any problem with them people up there. Oh, the, how does he do? We got one little old lady that walks all over my property. I put in a new heat pump. She comes on the property to see it. I put in a new uh, generator. She comes in to see it. We put, you know, we do stuff. She's all over the property. We, we, we you do, know. We've got some other, I think we may have some other speakers tonight, but listen, thank you. What is council's pleasure? Any questions? Council members say, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, no, great. Oh, what I was going to say to, rec what I'm going to recommend to town council, and of course this is just my recommendation, is we would like an authorization to proceed with the legal enforcement because we cannot wait another month on this. But with the understanding that we are trying to convene DZA as soon as possible to get this matter resolved, but we don't wait, want to wait another month to ask for your all's approval. So we would ask for it tonight with the understanding that we're going to still try to resolve this issue of DZA before we would proceed any further. I make the motion to <coughs> follow the second legal counsel's suggestion. Motion by Mr. Nash, second by President Thompson, just to make sure we're all clear, including me, I want to make sure. So what you're saying basically, we've got two solutions here. One is to stick by the original wording and, and throw the book at them for violating the 2003 buffer, or to in the meanwhile, maybe through some 
reawakening of spirits or whatever, that all of a sudden he'd be agreeable to the fence and so we the start putting the fence up. So both those options are on the table is what I'm hearing. But what time, what can we tell this couple that came here tonight from long distance? When, what's the latest they can expect to see some results? As soon as BZA can be convened with a quorum, because that's the issue we were having. Three people. Trying to get a quorum, correct. Three okay. people. As soon as BZA can be convened, which will be done ASAP, okay. as soon as that's done, the next day we will have an answer that night. The next day we will know how to proceed. And just give me a call. Yes. Send the paperwork to me. I'll put my little John Henry on and send it right back Mr. to you. Mr. Townsend, briefly, and I please beg discretion. Yes. Uh, this lady said eight foot fence. When we were here six weeks ago, it was a 12 foot fence. It's eight feet if it goes, it goes on the on hill. On top of the hill. It has to go on the hill. If you go off of that hill, it's got to be 12 right. because of the slope. If we make a mistake, can we make sure that the fence is built too tall? Can we make sure we do Let's please build it too tall. Build it 25 feet. I, well, I was going to say empty out the five apartments, and there you go. You got your sight and sound there. Well, right there. seriously, despite all this, thank you for your patience. We're on this. I need a vote on, I need a roll call vote. Mr. Green, before we get to the vote. Mr. Councilman Green has a floor. Councilman Green has a floor. Very sympathetic with you, but I just want to make sure I'm clear what we're doing here. The, the BZA, we don't have any control over them, but we appoint them. Is that correct? We nominate them. We nominate the them. Judge, judge So Judge Sella appoints. Is that right? Circuit Court Judge. Okay. Okay. So what I'm hearing is if, if BZA doesn't give us the answer that we want, we're going to sue. Is that what we're saying? What we are saying is if... BZA, for whatever reason, does not go along with the variance request that is, at least my understanding at this point, agreeable with Miss um, Townsend and also with Ken Walden and O.D. Duncanson, which is that eight foot on the hill vinyl sound barrier that's uniform in height right. that we will proceed with. So what was done in 2003 is what we, we've been practicing since I've been on council as a use by special exception. Is that similar? Am I that's up? correct. He, he got the, Mr. Duncanson in 2003 mm -hmm. got a permit, for, got permission from the town to build those apartments on the condition of the buffer. Was it a use by special exception permit or conditional use permit? Neither one. Neither one. Was, was, it, deeded? was it deeded that way? The zoning was in place. From 1992, what he needed was to push the building closer to the I, I guess what I'm trying to, get, trying to get at is, is that although I've been in this chair for almost seven years, I'm still a student of it, and, I'm one of, and, and if there's a remedy that we can take and bypass the BZA, if that's available to us, um, what I'm hearing is, is that in 2003, this property um, should have been should have been zoned, should have been done by special exception. And that's taken... I don't think so. I think what the problem is... is, is or is, deeded or it, whatever. It was a setback issue. The, the, okay. In 1992, when... Let me make sure everybody can hear me. In 1992, the town rezoned the entire town and did an annexation. Okay. And that process, that triangle where Criers Road, Mann Street, the D has, plus the trailer park, that was all zoned R3 already. So apartments, multifamily units are allowable by right in that district. The question was not whether apartments can go there. D's request to be able to move them closer to the Wilma's property line. Well, my than last would question would be to so. our, our attorney and to you is, is do we have a remedy here we can, we can take to keep from having our taxpayer involved with legal fees? Or well, I think at the mercy of, of yeah, I BZA, think we tried that. And we at the mercy of, of having, to, having to go through the legal system. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, the town may not win in court. I mean, there's also that specter. Um, I think the BZA is an independent body. I think that uh, they adopted the variance to start with. They're the ones that have to modify the variance. And quite frankly, I, I, man, we've tried a little It makes it easier if they court. modify the variance. It I makes it a lot easier. Ultimately, something. I think that would probably be the case. All right. Okay. As as I just didn't know if there was another option that we could. I think you're. Yeah, I think care. it's the BZA, and I think that uh, that uh, that that remedy from the BZA's decisions can be taken to circuit court by either aggrieved party. Um, it's easier if they do if they meet yeah. quickly. We just appointed a, a very astute person who's a peacemaker, mm -hmm. Sally Beal, to that panel, and it's a five-member panel. So um, hopefully they'll get a quorum soon. Any others? Good. We have a motion and a second on Mr. Nash's motion to. 
follow the attorney's advice, and that is to either pursue enforcement or and convene the BZA as soon as possible to maybe avoid legal fees in court. I would ask you roll call. I'm going to roll call it, and I believe it's Mr. Nash's night tonight, isn't it? Correct. I'm going to roll call this uh, <clears throat> vote on this motion, starting with Mr. Nash. Aye. 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 The motion carries 7-0. Thank you so much. That was visitor number one. Is anyone else tonight who would like to address council? I see Mr. Wayman Mitchell, then a gentleman in the back would be number, number three. Mr. Mitchell. And I would... Thank you, sir. Mr. Wayman Mitchell has the floor. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, I, I was, I'm here about the parking meters again, parking spaces again. Parking spaces? Uh, yes, handicap ones? Handicap ones, okay. yes. Okay. Uh, Chief and I went through this and went to the state code, and we found out that the, that the ordinance, that, that, that this, the, the art by, governing body for these parking spaces is a billing code, unlike Al Ellis would do it. But we need somebody to present this to the county to, to enforce the, to, that they've had the right signs in, in front of the buildings. Because the code says that the, that the parking meter, the parking sign should be from four to seven feet in front of any space. And that they had to, it's up to the bill to the people who own the business to have the spaces out there. This is one I took, how to. Let me ask you, let me ask you a question, sir. The parking spaces that are marked handicapped downtown, they should be owned by the town of Blackstone. Well, he, this is no, this, that's a business. This is family dollar here. Right? Oh, you're talking about in private parking lots? Right, right. right okay, right, right. like like wall, like no, we're, we're all right. <laughs> okay, okay, I see, I see. The newer structure, the newer structure should meet what building codes are in place, uh, but I think also newer structures like Dollar General, there is a zoning requirement on our parking, mm -hmm. and we can go back and, and try to find older properties slip in places like that that are historical. I don't know if the building code applied to the older stuff. So we, we just have to find what the, just said that's what it's supposed to be. When we looked it up and said this is what they're supposed to look like. Anywhere from four to eight feet. Okay. How about so Goodwill? Good. Goodwill's brand new. How how yes, their space? They got the line. O'Reilly's is brand new. Really, yeah. uh, so the new stuff should have building code compliance. The question is how far back can we enforce on the older structures? And I don't know the answer to that, I, okay. but I just want to know. We'll find out. Okay. And, uh, My concern is you got the, you got the one there, but it's, it's, it can't, people can't sit because they put food and stuff in front of it, you know, advertise. They're poorly it. marked, the paint fades. Well, can, we, can we ask the town manager to sign and paint? Talk with the current, well, you, it sounds like you have to talk to the current building inspector. Yeah, now, right. But he's, he's going out leave. and he <laughs> retires next week. <laughs> so, Mr. Mayor, can we not talk to this individual? Businesses and and ask sure. people like uh, Family Dollar people. They should be uh, oh, yeah. the, so good for business. It's good for business. Sure, because they depend on the public for their living. Sure, and uh, I agree. I don't see, I, before we go and get disappointed again, I think maybe a, <laughs> I think maybe a conversations and all. So, Mr. Mitchell, are you saying that in your conversations with the police chief, he's not? Um, happy with writing people well, he tickets. Can't enforce that he can't system. enforce it if the signs aren't in order. Right. You've got to have that vertical sign. Gotcha. And you, you need to have vertical sign and paint is what I was always talking No, you don't have to have paint. Don't, okay, vertical so sign. If the gotcha. paint is there, they, don't, they can't enforce it even if people are parking in it. But so it's the, the sign, sign, is the sign that counts. Gotcha. Okay, very good. I would ask staff if we could get together with, make contact with Family Dollar, Dollar General perhaps. And any places the staff yeah, comes anybody, up with, just yeah. thinking out loud, I'm having a blank here. Food Lion, Blackstone Shopping Center. <laughs> um, this may take a month or so to find people. They're really fun. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Mr. Mitchell? We're going to, we will get, We're get on. We're going to start our, our, uh, our cookouts and stuff in September again. Okay. And I'm caught with the cops. What day of the week will the, the cookouts be? Oh, well, I think it's the middle of the week. Is that Tuesday or Wednesday, something like that? Okay. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll get, we haven't got the schedule yet. We just okay. We're start. And also, the Blackstone Menace Association has the the service. July 30th, isn't it? 30th. And here's some pictures of some people that have been came. We had, we had approximately 300 people there at the last we expected more. We've gained something like three more churches, four, um, four more churches. That's great. So it's a real good project. I think that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Hope, Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell, it sure. might not be appropriate, but anyway, my twins have certainly enjoyed your roses. <laughs> 
and it's bright in their day, they want to come buy you a cup of coffee one day. Okay. <laughs> Make sure you take the flowers to them, too. I saw where you let some die over there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't recognize it, but uh, yeah. they certainly have enjoyed them this spring yeah. and summer. Thank you. Please, all right. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Right. Next, I had a gentleman I do not recognize, but you may come to the podium and just state your name and address, and we'll be glad to right. try to help you. My name is John Kessler. I live at 302 4th Street. Uh, been there since September 14. Got utility services over here, put down $300 deposit. Because of health issues of mine and my mother's, which are no longer pertinent, all the utility bills have been paid on time, okay? For the 12 month period, had to do to get your deposit back. Okay. Went over. Paid the bill in May, <coughs> spoke to the lady behind the counter. She said, just a second. She got a printout of my, I reckon, my pay record. And said, well, you got to go through July. I said, okay, no problem. Went on home, came up, paid July, and then it hit me. Oh, I do for my deposit back. So I came up and asked the lady, and she said, well, the woman you need to speak to isn't here today but she'll be here tomorrow I said what time uh, 8 30 but if you make it nine that way you you know you get I, so I show up at nine o'clock and spoke the same woman said uh, can I see this lady at that I don't have a name for but the lady that has to okay everything well she's not here yet I said well I'll wait around so I'm standing around 10 15 minutes chatting with the ladies and then she runs she runs the thing, comes out with a printout, won't let me see it. Goes into the back. Now, nobody else has come in this building yet, except somebody to pay a bill. And she comes back and she says, no, you're going to have to wait till August. I said, well, now, in May, it was July. I got stubs. Uh, and she said, well, I said, what's your operating procedure? There's got to be a SOP here. Right. She said, well, once you get your 12 months in a row, then it's got to go before the town council. Mm -mm. Okay. I said, when is the town council meeting? Well, it's this Monday, this coming Monday. I'll be there. So, gentlemen, ladies, I'm here. <laughs> I'm, I'm good people. I've All served right. my country, my state. All right. You know, my bills are paid. I'm just asking for what the agreement was. When I moved in here September 14th. Well, quick question for you. If you moved in here September 14th, you should have been eligible for your refund well, September 15th or October 15th. I had 15th. cancer. I had, some health I had oh, okay, cancer. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I My got mother you. had got brain you. cancer, passed yeah. away. Very sorry. So I had to pick and choose who I'm going to pay. You know, the rent's got to be paid. I understand totally. But the fact of the matter is you've established I have now so. made the, I believe it to be 13th in a row. So like I said, I ain't coming in here trying to... Bully huh. nobody. He gets three hundred dollars back plus interest, doesn't he, or just three hundred? Three hundred. Okay, doesn't get the interest right. Well, I thought about bringing up the interest, but <laughs> you know, I, I know the governments too. But being a small town government, I'm hoping you just love that three hundred. We can deal straight up. <laughs> right, right. You know, Mr. Novak, what do you know? I know this has been a little rather. I don't know anything about it, but I'm happy. If you're entitled to get your money back, we'll your money. I am very much entitled to, sir. Like I said. <laughs> Could we, could we, I don't, I don't want to put anybody's spot, sir, and I appreciate you coming here. Could we ask that, and I, I'm, I know you're going to cringe at this because you had an appointment before. <laughs> could we have someone meet with him at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and, and resolve this? Can you write your name and number on here? I guess mm -hmm. we'll find out something. Okay. She's doing this, and she may already have a deposit written up to give Jennifer. Okay. And I think the when they send out the bill, they'll send it to the council. Usually they don't write checks to after y'all approve. The bills. the bills. I see. Yeah, I think that's what that the makes sense. And that's an unfortunate communication breakdown, sir, but I'm, I'm going to ask uh, staff to, if you come by town hall tomorrow at 10 o'clock, if you will come by the town office at 10 a.m. or later tomorrow. That, that's I right next door here? Right over here. I've yeah. got his name and number. And somewhere. you want to speak to Brenda Bryant or Brenda Bryant or Gwyneth Prosize? If someone's not there, go see this lady over here. Brenda Bryce. Brenda Bryant. B R Y A N T. All right, and who else? Gwen. Or, or Gwen. Yeah, Gwen. 
We're off to a torrid start tonight. <laughs> Where's our hour time? We'll make it up. John, John, you may have missed the tail end of what the mayor was saying. What we, what you were told was correct. It was just a poor, poor message. We have to approve all payment of bills, including okay. refunding yours, and we'll we'll vote on it tonight, and you get your money. All right. Well, I'm sorry. I'm problem. just trying, you know, go with the rhythm, peaceful blade, and all that much. <laughs> Uh, that's, great, that's greatly appreciated. Trust me. Thank, thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you for your service and your patience. Thank you, sir. Anyone else tonight on a visit? I see Mr. Lewis Johnson. <laughs> good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yeah. Mount of Avenue look real good. <laughs> but my, my big concern right now is <laughs> the parking. I mean, um, Philip just stopped talking to me. Yeah, <laughs> talking to me about that. But you know, as long as they're parking on my side of the street, I don't think it'll be a problem. Because I gave a, a pool party uh, last la last week, and I had about I say about thirty cars lined up on it, and, <laughs> and everybody could pass each other. Right. But Phil would tell me then V Doc got to approve this name. What happened if V Doc said no? V Doc doesn't have to approve, if I may. Yes, yes, yeah, something like that. <laughs> I can't say that the town's taking a position, council's not taking staff. We had a meeting with V Dot on what day was there here? Thursday last week. And we do a monthly thing after they meet with the county. And I asked Diana Bryan, I said, look at Nodaway Avenue and tell me, because I think I've gotten a call from a council person that said, hey, they got a call from Peanut. Can they, are you, is it going to be legal to park on the street? And I said, well, I don't know. I'm not a traffic engineer, but Diana Bryant and the guys were here from VDOT, and on Thursday I asked them to take a look at the study to make sure it's wide enough. We do have a problem out there a little bit with a commercial tractor-trailer parking out there. That's probably going to be a little bit of a problem. I don't know if the cars are a problem, but I will make sure Diana differentiates between Traffic, tractor trailers and cars. Truck will be moved. Huh? He's getting ready to move. I hadn't seen it out there he's in a while. He's a truck in violation. We've been to that before. He's, he's not in violation of any ordinance. On the town street, though. No. Oh. It, it is legal to park a tractor trailer or commercial vehicle on any town street. In the We've town been given block. permission by the General Assembly to make that illegal and have we not voted, done it. We voted against the ordinance that was presented to us. That's right. Yeah. So the tractor trailer parking on the street may be a problem because of the width. I don't see a huge burning reason that I can tell you, engineering-wise, why you couldn't park cars, but I have asked VDOT to study it. I, they don't have to approve it. It's you guys approving. It's just as a recommendation, is it a good idea to park on there or not? That's what I've asked them to do. Well, people, are gonna, people are going to gravitate. Once the curb and the pavement gets done, people are going to probably choose to park on, on your side of the street. Right. Just, no, yeah. I will because say, there won't be any other last night, my wife and son and I were just riding around, as we do on Sunday evenings, just checking things out, and we rode down Nottaway Avenue. And I love seeing all the kids using it, but there was one truck that was parked in the driveway, block, blocking where the sidewalk would come across mm. the driveway. So all the kids were having to ride out into the. Mm. So mm. I'd like for our police officers, if I mean, obviously I would think it's not good for them to be blocking the sidewalk. Sidewalks hopefully are illegal. You should not be allowed to block a sidewalk. But because that's it tough. defeats the purpose of what we put the sidewalks in for. I can't sure. Quote you a code on this. I think certainly we all agree it shouldn't be. So just just relay it to the chief and just keep an eye on it. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, does the bus normally run on Ottawa Avenue? No. It turns yeah. around at the. Mm -hmm. We we as a Rotary Club have submitted and actually gotten a grant to put a bus shelter down there. At down in Cole Harbor. Down in Col at Cole Harbor. At the apartments. At the apartments. So I would think that we have a bus. I would hope. We don't go down as far as the apartments. We take that, take that first left. Okay. Gotcha. So, yes, well, we had some chatter there. about having a, a bus shelter. Rotary Club has <clears throat> been paid for. Yes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Vanorbeck. Josh. Josh uh -huh. keeps us from having a. Mr. Wayne, we're not that much money. Yeah. Yeah. As far as I know, see, it was like that when I came here. As far as I know, we can change it. Because um, technically we get funds from Nottaway County and that's Nottaway County, so technically we can go down there. It's just a matter of changing the route and letting people know. Can you look into that and see? Okay. Like the proper notices and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Royal. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Any other visitors before we get on to the.
just yes, Mr. Nathaniel Miller. I got one question. Fire away. Do you all have set times for the basketball court? We have a we have a we have a limit where the lights cut off. Okay, that's my question. And that's, that's nine. That's nine or nine. is it nine or ten? Nine. Nine, okay. nine p.m. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not raising cane. I'm just asking a question. Why come some nights you go over there at seven o'clock, the lights on, on, and next night you go over there, they'll be on. They have it's to up to the players. The players, mm -hmm. if you're going to have a game, if you're not going to go play right now, we have to cut those lights on. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a so switch. In other words, you're telling me that the players themselves control the lights. Right, but the, that's okay. A, okay. we have an override there at nine o'clock. That light goes off. Okay. I thought it was ten. It is allowed to be 10 o'clock when there's an ev event going on at Rigglesworth. Right. I was just wondering. I didn't know if they could That's a very good question. Very there is a button over there to. All right. Very good question. That ain't, now, he, he's smart. He knows how to hide. All right. Any other? I see another hand. Yes, Julia Alaric. Great question, and I, I don't believe so, but Mr. Norbeck, I, I, I feel one coming on Brunswick Avenue real soon. <laughs> the only schedule that we have is on Main Street, and we try to hit that twice a week, and I think they have a Monday and Thursday schedule. But otherwise, we try to do it. Um, you probably see that's, Brunswick that's Avenue swept correct. when the, that's, that's not correct. You, when you the bush hog is broke down. As soon as I wash my cars, huh? that, that, yeah. as as I wash <laughs> my cars you do it. That's Main Street right. has a schedule, but for Brunswick Avenue streets like that, we usually do when the bush hog's not working or Richard Lee or Richard Poole can get on the equipment. Other than really the primaries, there's not a not a fixed schedule. You, you have you have a problem near your intersection of loose gravel, don't you? On the side on the second street side, so the third street side. We have some loose gravel, plus I also have some building You sure do. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you one better. We have a leaf getter upper. And uh, which is specific to leaves, and it's a, it's a leaf blower that goes around in the fall. If you'll get them to a designated point, we'll come get them without having to use a street sweeper. Well, I usually do for a property. Mm -hmm. um, I'll put those into a designated point you know, to one specific area, and they come by and they suck those things up, no problem at all. It's the ones in the street that I'm more concerned about. Mm -hmm. And it is gravel, it's about a regular gravel. Mm -hmm. It's not like a regular. If you would like, and I've done this a couple times on Gravit and Maven. If you have a day that maybe you and your neighbors can put your heads together and say, hey, can we all make sure the cars are off on a particular day? I'll come down there. If you and your neighbors, Bobby and everybody else says, it'll be Tuesday. We know that is the best day we'll have the cars move. I'll see if I can get David Oster to run the thing over there on Tuesday. Very good. Thank you very much. That is Julia Alaric with her fine young man's son, Odin. He's a, quite a runner. Very good. Any other uh, visitors at this point? There will be opportunity at the very end for comments or questions. Hearing none, we have our fire chief report in your packet. The chief is out of state. Can I hold the yes, and uh, thank you. Thank Unless you all want me to say it, but I can't remember. I don't think so. Enjoy your evening. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, all. you also have the minutes from the regular meeting of June 19th and the continued meeting of June 28th. What's your pleasure, members of council? I move that we accept the minutes as presented and waive the reading of, of such. Is there a second to Mr. Green's motion? <coughs> Mr. Tucker has seconded. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Next we have our payment of bills. I want to thank the clerk for writing the total in the cover page. You, you have bills already paid at <laughs> $549,700.82. Is there a motion to approve that? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? No questions on the first page of bills. Hearing none, I'll ask for a roll call vote starting with Mr. Nash. Aye. 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 Uh, the motion carries Mr. Tucker 7-0. Bills to be paid totaling $265,664.31. Is our motion to approve those? So Mr. Nash has moved and Mr. Tucker has seconded. Questions? I do under police department. We have coloring books for $350. Hope it's uh, a lot more than just coloring books. <laughs> <laughs> But it's Halloween night, I bet. Okay. <laughs> okay. We draw those out of that youth program money. The yeah. chief has some money set aside. But if you'd like to have one, Mr. Nash, we can make sure you get one. <laughs> I'd love to have a $350. <laughs> 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 yeah. Any other questions? Well, David Haight, there's two auto attendants that have almost $2,000. What is that? One is material and one is the flavor. It's only allowed me to get one. 
I believe it's work over the police department where we no longer dispatch, and I think it's going over there and putting in a separate line for people and transferring lines over to the county. Okay. The under administration, we have railroad management company for four hundred eighty-five dollars. Is that lease for this property? That's leases with the railroad. We also have leases for water lines that go under. I could pull the invoice and find out exactly what is broke out. It, it's for leases for the railroad for property and or easements for utilities okay. that cross their property. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? We have a motion and a second. I'll have a roll call vote starting with Mr. Nash. Uh, 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 the motion carries 7 0. Next, we'll get into committee reports. There are recommendations from the street can and I, light. Can I go back to one thing on the fire chief report? Yes, you may. Um, we had just approved the uh, procurement policy. I talked to, I think, Jennifer. I'm for letting them slide on this one on the advertising. If it can, since it's such a bizarre request, is there any way that we can advertise on Eva, which is an E-Virginia site, and be seen by a lot more people than, no offense to, no, the, no, to the newspaper, it's more who are we going to get to outfit a truck? By if, we, if we can find an alternative advertising, if council's agreeable, I mean, sure. and we so just have we to do, do just this one? an advertising. Sure, I was going to say, I was going to recommend to council, and I'm glad you brought it up, that because they've gone through the due diligence, you know, if unless we think we're going to significantly cheaper quotes, um, he's got three bids. But I don't think written quotes are necessarily going to satisfy okay. the Maybe. procurement policy that we're all trying to struggle with now to make sure we're good to well, go. I'd further you on that. And so I would like to, an advertising, if there's an alternative, I don't okay. think we're going to draw that's fine. more. So can I make a motion that we allow the fire department for this one project mm -hmm. to solicit bid to be an evil? Yeah. I mean, no, are these, I bids still, these bids still valid, though? The bid, yeah. We or you, you start all over? You start all over. They have to resubmit. Okay. They have to resubmit. Ms. Thompson seconds the motion. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? The motion is to, to allow advertising, require advertising through the EVA. But this, this is an unusual type thing that we don't have a lot of vendors. Roll call. Roll call vote because of the amount of money starting Mr. Nash. Aye. 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 Motion carries 7 0. Now we'll get into our Street and Light Committee. Mr. Tucker, you have several mm -hmm. recommendations. Mm -hmm. I'll see, we're going to go. Yeah. Committee recommended that the uh, award of the contract of, to Biggs for that in the amount of six hundred fifty-four thousand five hundred sixty-one dollars and thirty-nine cents. You like to offer that as a motion? Yeah. Hey, who would like to second that motion before we get in discussion? I'll be glad to second. I just have a question. All right, Mr. Green, a second, and, and, and he has a question. M Mr. Chairman, is that going to take care of that um, storm drain on South Main? It floods. You know what I'm talking about, Manager for Norbert? At the Wolf House. Near the Wolf House. Wolf House. Is that going to take care of that? That's the plan. That's what we're doing. <laughs> it's been taken care of a numerous times. That's, that's a tough one. Now, I would share with, with the chairman, since our meeting, we didn't have a formal figure, and we put in what their original 733 bid was minus what we had in hand, which is 85000 We went back and negotiated additionally with Biggs, and I have a new figure, if I may. Yeah. I'll share with you guys. You got sevens in it? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's less, so that's a good thing. Less than 654. 642. And I'll give you the exact two to the penny figures. If I can find it, of course. Sorry. Why you're looking. Sorry. All right. This is from. Which streets? It starts Bagley, Bagley Street. to where? Six. Six. Starts at Bagley Street Go and goes down to the nursing home. Sixth Street at the nursing home. So all those potholes that we have in Main Street right now will be gone. Correct? Those aren't potholes. <laughs> we have pavement that's going pooey right there, and we need to work on that. How far is going to widen the sidewalks? So is on both sides of the street? No, we're not going to widen it except for, if I'm not mistaken, over on the side where the Grace One is. Okay. That's the specific part. We're trying to stay away from retaining walls and head walls and such things that are expensive, like at the ring house. I'm mm -hmm. trying not to dig any of those up. But the majority of the widening of the sidewalk is going to be up towards Bagley, Pete Ellington's house. Um, gotcha. I got you. Uh, Grace Wong, that section right there. Okay, and I think there'll be some widening and additional at the, it's not the MacArthur house, at the corner, Westmoreland house, excuse me, at the corner. That correct figure. 
The revised figure is 642-609-39. 642-609-39. Just because of the amount of money, Mr. Chairman, okay. I offer a substitute motion to approve the committee's recommendation of 642609 Second. Mr. Nash, second, uh, Mr. Nash seconds Mr. Green's substitute motion, which takes priority. Any further mm -hmm. discussion? I'll have a roll call vote, starting with Mr. Nash. Aye. 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 Uh, that motion carries 7-0. Mr. Tucker, you want to talk about the Happy Cafe? Oh, yeah. Tracing the sidewalk on, the south, on South Main from Maple to Irving. Irving Street. Is that all sidewalk curb? Just on the west side of the street? West side. If you remember, the sidewalk and curb and gutter in front of Happy Cafe is a little uh, scratchy okay. these days. And I think there was a request when I was out sick to take a look at it. In the interim, we've also had a request to replace sidewalk on High Street, which is directly across from Epson and Arlene's house, on the west side. Okay, Curb and gutter and sidewalk is not good there either. So I told the committee, I said, this is not going to be an inexpensive project. Um, but we went and looked at both. And I think the property owner that's kind of interested in seeing a new curb and gutter and sidewalk is agreeable if we're going to, we're just going to move a, a, a water meter right now in order for them to construct a driveway at their house right now is very muddy and they're going to put some gravel in. Andre's going to move it with the same terms and conditions that we typically use is any materials would be the property owner's responsibility and the labor is provided by the towns, what we've been doing consistently. Uh, I don't think, I think we'll be able to reuse the box. So I think High Street, we're going to dodge a bullet for a year because I think the property owner can, can see through it. But uh, when asked which one then they would like to choose the street committee chose South Main from Maple to Irvin. Is any of that paid for and portion by the property owners? Mm -mm. It's all replacement and maintenance. Replacement. Be that money? Gotcha. Be that money is eligible. Maintenance money is eligible to be used, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And so if you want to, can we, um, well, I'll ask Mr. Tucker, would you like to make a motion about the Happy Cafe and the High Street sidewalk curb and gutter to get one motion? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Miker has moved. Do you like to second, second. that motion? Mr. Tucker seconds that motion. Um, discussion. Discussion. The, the, I walked the high street. It, it, it's it's wretched. And Dreadful. There's, there's no, there are places there. There's no driveway. So the people, some other curbing you know, is three inches and some of it's five inches. And I know we don't want to go on private property. And, and But is there anything we could do? I, I'm, I'm in agreement of moving that meter. It's right in the middle of the driveway. In the driveway. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see I don't see why the why the homeowner should bear any cost move, moving that that meter. It's in the, it's in the driveway where the inlet is. We've uh, we've moved meters on Tunstall Avenue because a tree had grown around it. Right. Uh, we did one on Fifth Street because a tree had grown around it, and that's the basically the terms and conditions that I've worked out with the property owners. Hey, if we got to buy a new box and we're out well, cash, we're with it, that's I'm what I've been saying, doing. That's where the inlet, where the town, whatever, at whatever time, made the mm. driveway, and that's where the water meter is. That's just... The water meter is right in the driveway, right absolutely. in the middle of it. In the middle of it. So there's potholes and stuff where there people have, have <laughs> broke the curb. Can we it's just terrible. put some crushing run or something? Can we just... Well, I don't think we're going to help that up? situation. I think putting curb... Crush and run is just going to make it. Well, we can dig out sections, put crush and run that may be better, but to just put it on top, I don't I think, think it's the committee's a right. Winner. I mean, Main Street, I would take priority, but mm -hmm. so is this motion saying we're going to do it next year or we're going to try to budget for it? Or I would like saying? to budget for it, yeah. Okay. The high street curb and gutter is tough. It, it's, it's off. Bad news. Right. It's, yeah. To, to say the I, least, it's off. It's, it's old. Um, we have a motion and a second to proceed with the committee recommendations on the sidewalk at the Happy Cafe in that block as well as the moving of the meter box for now on High Street and, and to try to budget for the High Street curb and gutter or si next, si year. Yeah, next year. I'll ask for a roll call vote starting with Mr. Nash. Uh, 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 motion carries 7-0. Two more recommendations from Mr. Tucker's committee. Reducing speed limits on several streets. I believe it's Grab and Mabin and, Main. and, and Main. South Main. Yeah. Yes. Downtown. I think, quite frankly, we, we threw two options. We know what it would take to lower the speed limit to 15 miles an hour. We did it at Pickett Court. We can request a traffic study be conducted by a certified engineer through B&B &B like we did last time. It's about $1,500 each. Per each. Okay. And we can do that. Now, we threw the option of traffic calming. 
And I said, which do you guys prefer? I don't think VDOT's a fan of traffic calming because they don't like putting in obstructions, but it is legal. And Diana, you know, flat out said, it's up to the town council because you guys manage your roads. If you want to do speed bumps and that sort of thing, just understand snow plows don't like speed bumps and all the same arguments that are out there. Or we can do the, the studies and reduce the speed limit. But speed limit's going to be reduced. You put speed bumps in College Avenue and places like that, people will drive slower. But I think you're going to have snow plows. You know the, the situation is going to be, you know, I'd rather spend the money and collect the fines. Mm -hmm. Plus the fact if you do traffic calming, guess what? I, I can I can tell you right now you're gonna get requests on College Avenue near Sixth Street. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get you're gonna get requests for speed bumps all over town. Yeah, you want mm -hmm. fifty speed bumps around. Yeah. <laughs> Which wouldn't you know, like I said, it wouldn't it's be the worst thing in the world, but the snow But you won't get a bunch of them. We're gonna we be, might as well yeah. hire a three man crew and just start fix building. up yeah, fix up speed <laughs> start bumps. fixing them in, yeah. you know in the spring. But are, are we getting are we actually solving the problem with reducing the speed limit? Or are our officers actually writing the tickets? Sixteen last month. Yeah, so mm -hmm. to me, I mean, is it really solving the issue if we spend... Speed bumps are going to solve the issue, but you've got the negative side of it because I think you're going to do a lot of them. We have how many... But, and also think about this, folks. How many blizzards do we have a, a year? Yeah, not many. I mean, Twice a year, maybe, you know, when you're Mr. Three Monica times. has a... Well, he we, wants us... We keep capitating around the fact that the way to stop people from speeding is get, is get the ticket book out. And I've maintained this council meeting not once but several times you yeah. have uh, nothing will get your attention like a hundred dollar fine or whatever right happens to be and i know uh chief kuzmiak does not want to get to town <coughs> to have a reputation of being a speed trap or, or unkind to people but we can put Stop signs up all over town, which people either ignore or don't work. Nothing works like pulling your pocketbook out. And I still maintain that without police department now getting back up to strength. Right. There's got to be some very good training for some young fellows. I don't disagree with anything that Councilman Monk here said, but the fact of the matter is, I don't think we can put enough speed bumps to control. But if you get your reputation on, on Maven and, and some of those other roads that you will get a ticket, it'll take care of it. Well, it's always there on Maven. They sit down about 3, three o'clock in the right. evening. A police officer is there, and these new cops are writing a lot of tickets. <laughs> well, the last, it they're, take long to take care of The it. speeding tickets we see every month, it's averaging about between 10 and 15 a month. Yeah, you don't have low. to write too many of them before a fella gets points on his Sure, record. or the warnings. Prices insurance up or takes his life. Does council wish that? What I'm hearing. You mentioned South Main. I mean, North Main, too, is, um, I own a business on North Main, and boy, I tell you, that if that's 25, then yeah, I don't yeah. know what speed is. They start gunning yeah. when they, they start gunning when they go by your place leaving town, because they, they do. With a motion being over here, I know we're only one in there, I know that. Yeah. With a motion being over here. Yes, Mr. Mockure, Mr. Mockure has the floor. Mr. Mockure, make, make a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we request the, t the police chief to in, to name and enforce, I'm not going to name the areas. More aggressively enforce the speed limits and... To actively, uh, aggressively do it. Okay. In these areas, particularly, and, and do it for the next three or four months and let's get this problem under control. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't reduce the, the, the speed limit in the areas that I feel like needs to be reduced. I don't think that 25 miles an hour is is or is is excessive speed to a, through a, a residential section if a person keeps it there. But 35 if, or 40 years. 35 or 40 okay. years, and if a ticket will keep you down to 25 miles an hour, I don't see why we need to go through signs and and speed limits that are not going to be any more enforced. The okay. sign is not going to enforce. Well, I respectfully disagree with you because, in essence, the 25 mile an hour speed limit is 31 miles an hour. 
most certain most general district court judges you go up there 25 and the 26 and yeah. they're not, not going to enforce the ticket I, I would submit to you based on my courtroom observations that it's actually about 36 well so why so I'm, I'm gonna make them I'm gonna make them if you finish with your motion about, yeah, about he's moved going, he's moved I'll second that to get to send a, send a signal to the chief through the manager that we'd like our our town's speed limits enforced but I'm gonna make another motion okay let's Go ahead. Go ahead. Is there any way that we could get a blanket from the General Assembly instead of having to do a traffic study on every road? Because I can tell you, Thank College you. Avenue is going to come up and say, hey, I want a traffic study. I mean, you're going to have the same problem as speed bumps. You're going to have the same problem as speed bumps. College and Lunenburg are real issues. Brunswick's okay because Brunswick's wide. Brunswick is a very wide, but College and Lunenburg, there's some real, they're real issues there. I can tell you everywhere. Like in front of Rigglesworth, the basketball court. I mean, we may have to do a traffic study there. So. Do we have to pay fifteen hundred dollars? Twenty five, but the, the traffic study will allow you to enforce below twenty five. Correct. Right. So I mean, there's no point 15. in and no point in putting a sign up that says fifteen if you can't well, enforce. We've got. Well, I think we've got. I think Mr. Monker's motion, which has been seconded by Mr. Green, is something everybody can uh, applaud, and that is Mr. Monker is calling for more active, aggressive enforcement of speed limits throughout Blackstone. And then in the meantime, let's vote on that motion first. Let's take that motion Particularly first. Particularly these trouble. Particularly these areas cited, and we, we don't need to be keep it a secret. It's it's Maven, Gravit, and downtown between Pizza Hut and Hardee's. That's what's well, being just. I, I I would go so far as as division. Division. To, All right. To, between, division to Irvin. The division. Maybe between, not Barco, um, but uh, between um, Pizza Hut and McDonald's. I'm talking to. To Gus Mitchell's. Yeah. Okay, to Jenkins North Maven. I would not object to these streets. Okay. All right. All right. So from, from Main Street between Irvin, which is Irvin, Not to even. Division Street. All right. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Opposed. Which one are we, we voting on? All that was, of it no, together? That was, no, that was a motion okay. Mr. Mockyer made on more aggressive enforcement of speed limits um, throughout town, but in particularly this, the area cited by the committee. All right. Now the floor yeah, is open for more discussion. So before, I mean, before I want to feel comfortable going and saying, all right, well, let's spend $1,500 on each individual study can philip in the meantime this month find out if we can, find do, out if we can do a blanket study yeah and see where our problem areas are black because if we do that i mean we're going to get up did we could did Let's delegate see. Wright get us pick a court did. or did we go through the normal yeah. channels pick a court he, he 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 got it put in there i mean he was our he was the liaison pay for actually pick a court the state code already approved we did the traffic study you're right we that's right yeah we still had to pay for it find out what mr nash is saying but i guarantee you the state's going to say no you're not going to do a town as a whole that's just too easy but yeah, but find but find out it's certainly a valid suggestion yeah, because I cost mean, us I nothing is just like what the speed bumps are i mean i like the idea of speed bumps but if you add it on one or two streets, it's going to be on 40, 50 streets mm -hmm. that you're going to get requests. So, I mean, I'm going to want a traffic study on 10th Street. Well, to be honest that. with you, I wouldn't <laughs> mind a 15 mile hour speed limit in Blackstone. I mean, leave home a few minutes early. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I mean, everything in my world is, is two miles from my house. I mean, they may come back and say, not only Avenue is not appropriate, or some of these yeah. other streets are not appropriate. Well, I think, I, I hate to disagree with you, Mr. Green, but I think 15 miles an hour is. Too slow for. It's just not uh, appropriate. It's too slow on Main, but if you live on Eight or Virginia Avenue or some of these side residential streets or or Taylor or Carver, twenty five and you got young children. I tell you right now, while right. we've been blessed with a few few exceptions, it's fast. I know I've stood out there in the age of my yard at times. I mean. Yeah. Wanted to cuss, and I've, a few times I have cussed. I people. don't think 15 is too too low for coming through Main Street. I don't disagree, but like I said, downtown, I like I said, West Entrance Road. Um, you know, you know, you want to encourage travel on the main arteries in town. What you want to do is avoid. And 15 miles an hour may traffic. help, but you want to make it hard on them with the four ways and to cut through these residential areas. When you live there, you're still, you got skin in the game. You know your neighbor's kids or whatever. I when you're, when you're late for work at Pickett wherever and you don't know anybody, you just you're gunning it. You're gunning it. Well, y'all can say what you want to, but about six months ago we had this conversation and we asked the police chief to monitor um, Lindenburg Avenue and he put the trailer up and it worked. It worked to the point I had strangers Give me a mouthful. You, 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 that SOB I saw in the paper. You got, I got a ticket. And I said, well, you ought not be running 39 miles now in my neighborhood. Amen. You know? I agree. But I walk. I try to walk that neighborhood every day. That worked, and it's continued to work. I, I don't recall seeing anybody speed on Brunswick and Lindenburg in quite some time. So, what y'all want? Y'all want to ask for a traffic study uh, on certain streets that go to 15 miles an hour, or just let Mr. Monkier's motion, which has been passed. 
Is that good I, enough I, for now? I move we go ahead and do the traffic study on uh, Mabin, Gravit, Gravit and um, north, north and South Main Street from Bagley to Division. I'm not Bagley. Irving. Uh, Ir Irving to Division. Right. Okay. Mr. Green's made that motion. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Thompson, a second. Any further discussion? I'll ask for a roll call vote starting with Mr. Nash. Nay. He voted no. Just because I think we need He's speaking I, I loud with him. We just need I, to. I think that no is, is, is an all right, too. No. Reluctantly. Mr. We, got, we have nay by Mr. Nash, nay by Mr. Monk, or nay by Mr. Hamner. Mr. Uh, Aye. Aye. Mr. Tucker has a phone. It's going to be defeated either way, but you. Uh, we said we said on Irving. What he's saying is, Mr. Green, the, the motion is to do a traffic study to look into decreasing the speed limit yeah, for 25 that. on Mabin, Gravit, and on Main Street, basically between Pizza Hut. And the Jenkins on North Main. The lower to 15 miles an hour. I don't think, I don't think that going on. I do know. You want to vote nay? No. That motion fails by the vote of five to two. But I still would, I, as a council, I hope we can, I mean, because I agree with the, we need to, I agree that we need to lower them, but I want to see if we, there's a way to do it without. So many traffic studies. Right. That's my. Yes, well, that's fine. I agree. I agree 100 percent that they need to be done. Sure. But maybe we can save by doing a blanket. I know trucks come through. I know they be doing 30. I want to ask council one question before we move on. One, just one question to think about. And I'll ask. Well, I'll tell you what. Can, I will ask staff. Could you put on the agenda for let's say October traffic calming, just to see how if our make sure council is still in tune, if opinions have changed. Can because that's indisputable. A traffic bump or a hump, it's called basically a traffic hump. It, it, it works. Can you don't have to have a police answer? officer there. It Can works. we have an answer from our manager next month about the traffic studies? Yes, yeah, so at the August council meeting, if we would have an answer from staff on can you do the traffic study town wide? You have to go piecemeal, street by street by street. So that's going to get hot. $1,500 times 56 streets or whatever. Oh, yeah. More than that. I think Pickett Court was the poster child for 15 miles an hour. I think it's going to be the, the, the it'll be tougher. To get a, an affirmative vote on bigger segments. streets yes. and yeah. wider streets. No doubt. Well, no doubt. You take, for example, Lunenburg. Lunenburg is not necessarily 15 miles an hour. The homes are spaced Correct. apart. They don't the face sidewalks, they don't the sidewalks are, 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 you know, you don't have to worry about a child darting out in the road, but there are certain streets that are worth $1,500 for me. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mitchell made a great point. You know, we got to watch a kid get killed and then worry about $1,500. The the east-west uh, streets tend to, Mr. Green made a great point, there are very few homes, if any, that actually front Lunenburg Avenue. Most of them are in the Sally Beal block down there. Mm -hmm. But those resident, those east-west streets, um, and then you have a street like 7th Street, which is like the world's best street as far as width. It's just magically wide. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just weird how the streets were built. But um, between, between Brunswick and Lunenburg. Oh, between Brunswick and Lunenburg. <laughs> All right, um, we have one more recommendation. From Mr. Mr. Tucker's committee has a recommendation to allow the manager to fix the drop-off at Taylor Street and Jap Hawks Lane. I think there was some requests there, and um, there wasn't actually a recommendation to do any improvement. I think Mr. Patterson wanted to address it. It's fairly steep off the edge of the pavement, and it's a ditch and a storm drain. I don't think an unusual circumstance in the town of Blackstone, but instead of spending money on a, a drop inlet and a series of pipes and that sort of thing, I think the committee agreed that we can put some deflectors like um, um, signs that are reflective to try to let people know that there's a, a turn there because there's not a stop sign there it just kind of makes it a turn so we're going to try to without making physical improvements maybe put up a sign this, or two is this maintenance is this require action of council i'm with you but there is a I don't recommendation think so. by the council yeah I, I don't i don't know if there's a recommendation formally other than yeah, let's leave that alone we let van orbit try to figure it out with I david appreciate that i appreciate the committee um, i do have one other thing i would like yeah. to add on the street committee mr uh um uh, Mitchell will be very pleased to know. Our one year is up from the period that we started earmarking parking tickets for help. If you remember, he had, uh, Mr. Mitchell had come up with an idea to pay tickets with canned food, and the end result is, and the end result of council decided what we were going to take the proceeds from parking tickets and give them to help to help folks in the community, and we cut a check, and I believe it's in your board packet this month for four hundred forty dollars for help. 
Very good. <laughs> one year, so it'll be in July when we do that. That maybe. will help probably one person, but one family or maybe more. Keep their power on at the house. Great job, Mr. Mitchell. Great job. Before you leave committees. Yeah, I've got them. <laughs> before we, 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 we fall a little behind tonight, before we leave committees, I'm going to recognize Mr. Green has something. Go ahead, Mr. Nash. Mr. Nash. I had a constituent ask since we're on street and light this evening um, about, and I think you informed me of something, but just I want you to clarify on 2nd Street in Brunswick. We went on the private, we're not private property, I guess, but putting, I mean, what is it? Can you explain? Here's the deal. When we put the curb and gutter in front of Betty Wood's house okay. and in that entire section of the street, if you look at it, it was intended to be a handicap ramp to go from Brunswick Avenue back to the house. In order to make that work, there was going to have to be a significant amount of grading to her front yard. Okay, she didn't want us digging up her yard. We didn't want to digging up her yard, and she felt like Hazel could get in the house using a set of steps and handrails. So we put in a set of steps. We still owe her, owed her a handicap rent. Okay, so when we came to finishing the sewer project, the sewer contractors tore that sidewalk up coming out of her house, and the contractors paid to replace the sidewalk coming out of the side of her house. She indicated, and I told her, that that handicap ramp that we owed her, that she saved us from having to redo a yard and go significantly back, that we would put it on there. Well, she informed David Ostrander a couple weeks ago that she would prefer to have steps rather than a handicap ramp, and so indeed the town put in the steps. These were our these were things that were given to her as part of putting the curb and gutter in and saving the town a significant amount of money and not having to put a handicap ramp in. It really saved us a pile of money. So is it going to keep us from putting a handicap ramp? I mean, if she yeah, she put it in writing. She did not want one. So we put in a set of steps as opposed. The actual grading on the side is actually, believe it or not, on town property. And, um, you know, she had called and asked David to take a look at it. And I supported David. That was a decision he had made to try to make it so that she could mow the grass right. on that slope. And that is cut the bank, I guess, somewhat cut the side of the bank off. Yeah, instead of it being at a very steep angle, it's somewhat less. The town lived up to the obligation it made <coughs> to, in 2013 as part of the sewer line improvement project. Very it good. saved us from having to dig up our whole front yard, good putting in that sidewalk. Good to clarify that on the record. Okay. That's always good. Mr. Green had a comment. Mm -hmm. Yes, last month after we appropriated the budget, as chairman of the finance committee, I failed to recognize staff. Um, Jennifer Hardy and Philip, y'all did a great job. It's a lot of work to put a budget together, a lot of variables. Um, y'all went above and beyond what I could ever expect as chairman. I just want to thank you both. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, well said. While you're speaking of budget, we're going to try some new things with the department heads very quickly. I know everybody, this is a short agenda. We should be able to go. We're starting new procurement, and department heads are now responsible for doing the procurement for their departments, bidding out getting quotes, getting estimates, whatever the tier is that we need to do. So we want to be a little more cautious about that. Jennifer has been pretty picky about making sure that's done, and that's a good thing. Um, but we're also going to have department heads start coding their individual spending. So when they get a purchase order, we want them to include in the on the purchase order request a code from which line item in their budget that they'll be taking it from. So next thing you know, when David needs small tools and we've already spent it all, David will not so department heads will have will be, do that. Will know they're being watched and have skin in the game. That's department heads are going to now be responsible for the spending in their departments under the certain terms and conditions of purchase orders and uh, procurement policy. And I think most of them embrace it. I think most of them say, hey, that's a good thing. I want to be more responsible for what's going on in my, in my lane here. So we'll be doing more and more of that. Okay, very good. Here. All right, moving right along to unfinished business. The first item you have is basically information we were – Unsuccessful with the application for the Rural Homeowner Rehab Grant, which means the number of winter weatherizations is not going to be like we had hoped. We, I know you had a long list of folks for weatherization, but that now we're looking at the reality is how many homes? Four homes. Four homes. Four. But we're going to reapply for that grant ASAP, is that correct? Whenever we can. As soon as they tell us. Very good. Um, we've handled number two, the fire department command vehicle, about the advertising, mm -hmm. uh, bids. The burn building, we had good news, uh, bad news from Prince Edward County. We heard from Dinwiddie County. We have not heard from Dinwiddie. I did talk to the county administrator, and he said they had a meeting last week, wow. and their fire director, they have, apparently they have emergency services coordinator, oh, yeah, big time in and um, he was supposed to give an answer. Kevin Massigal is usually pretty Johnny on the spot, so there must be a reason why he hadn't called me back or something. But in my personal opinion, I think it's not necessarily bad news because it's going to be a lot better if we don't have 14-member fire departments with a million different opinions. And 
So I think it may actually work out. It may be a little more expensive, but I think it'll work out to everybody's advantage to be able to make a decision and have a program that's working. I agree. I agree. And we've handled Main Street variants. That was, uh, we didn't have any fireworks in Blackstone until July the 19th or 17th. <laughs> <laughs> Dilapidated buildings, um, you've got a place on Main Street, obviously not the apartments. No. <laughs> so you're gonna, when will that be uh, removed, do you think? Will it be removed by fire or by just? No, July? it's uh, too close to the street and under the power lines. Believe it or not, there's a condemned house on Main Street. You'd never know it. But there are vines growing all around the thing. If you look at it on Google Earth, you can't even see it. Okay. It is tucked back in the bushes. Okay. Very good. M meals um, tax. It, it will not be burned. We'll try to move it as soon as possible. Not, not safe to burn. But I have requested that the uh, asbestos inspection be taken and done. So Waco Incorporated will be coming down to do the sampling on the asbestos before we do anything else. It says that you need our authorization to seek remedy via court. Do you need that? Oh, that's the very, sorry. That's under the Main Street one. Yeah. Gotcha. Now, another you go to court on. There are two establishments listed as being behind the meals tax. One, I don't mind saying publicly, Huddle House, which we all know is going through bankruptcy, and that's been on the list for almost two years now. I believe it would be two years in August, as a matter of fact. There's another establishment there. Is any development there? Was paid at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Okay. That was due June 20th, correct? Yes. Did they get assessed penalty and interest? Yes. Okay, very good. Did they pay that interest and penalty? Very good. Very Before good. you move on, this this uh, asbestos, this asbestos con. Do we have a contract on that? Do we, have a, do we have a yearly or not for asbestos? We get prices. So you're usually special renovations and or Waco is usually the low bidder. So you're just assuming, but you you're going to put it out for bid or you absolutely. I get prices. I don't expect it to be over ten thousand dollars. So whenever I have the sample, because I don't know what to bid, so I've got to get a sample done. Waco is going to come down and do the sample at no cost to the town, but then I can. Get a price for special renovations in Waco. Um, just depends on what you find. It's a center block building, so I don't expect it to be a huge amount. But remember that one at Dillard Street near Mr. Tucker's, that was $8,500 in just as best that we found in that house. So hopefully, very little. Item three, there's nothing to report. Yeah, Mr. Lewis Johnson, briefly, yes. You, well, you're, not, you're, not, you're not paying. You're charging, and this is what gives sometimes local governments a fit about restaurants. They're charging their consumers a 6.5% tax on meals. They're collecting it for the town. They're not paying the town anything. They're just bringing the money to the town. 